Hi, Steve here, postprocessingmastery.com. And in this quick Photoshop tip, I'm going to share with you the secret of how to blend exposures in Photoshop naturally by avoiding the number one mistake that I see people make, including myself when I look back on some of my older photos. So if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click that bell notification icon so you don't miss my new videos when I publish them. And also you can download my free guide on how to get started with luminosity masking by clicking the link in the video description below. But for now, this one tip that I'm about to share with you will hopefully change the way that you approach your exposure blending. Or if you're already doing this, then it will confirm that you're on the right track. So without further ado, this tip that I want to share with you today is to not overblend your skies when you're blending multiple exposures. So what do I mean by this? Let's take the image that's on the screen right now, for example. And this is one, it's one of my older shots uh, that I took quite a few years ago. And at the time I processed it and I was blending a darker exposure for the sky in with a uh, brighter exposure for the foreground. And what I was really going for is, uh, you know, to capture and really get across in the image all the beautiful warm sunrise colors in the sky. So to achieve that, I basically blended the sky exposure into this image and kept it really quite dark so that those colors were really deep and rich and vibrant. And then the foreground, because I wanted to see lots of detail in the foreground, I made that quite bright in comparison. And at the time I thought, you know, those colors in the sky look great. The foreground looks, uh, looks great. But I, I didn't really sort of see the bigger picture, which is that the sky really considering the sun is in the sky and that's the brightest thing in the whole kind of uh, scene uh, you know the sky really shouldn't be darker than the foreground so this is what i mean by over blending your sky so you know taking that dark exposure and blending it in to a, a bright foreground but making it so that it's really too dark for the foreground and it just doesn't look realistic i mean if this is the look you want to go for you know that's a creative uh, choice that you can make but, you know, for me, for creating a natural looking image that sort of looks realistic and doesn't look overly photoshopped, of course, every image does go through Photoshop, as you know, um, to get the best out of it. But when you see a dark sky in a bright foreground like this, to me, that's just a sign of, uh, you know, over processing or over blending the sky. So I've just made a quick example here um, just so that I can show you this tip. Um, quite quickly. Uh, so I've just made a group three in the uh, in the layers panel here just to show you what a more natural version of this might look like. And that is like this. So, you know, as we can see here, this version shows, um, you know, the sky is a lot lighter, the colors aren't as deep and rich, um, but it is a more realistic blend. You know, the sky and the foreground are more evenly lit. And more importantly, or most importantly, the sky is not darker than the foreground. Um, you know, the sun being in the sky, you know, you would assume is going to be the brightest thing. Um, so, you know, it doesn't make sense that the, the objects that the sun is lighting would be lighter than the light source itself. Now, there are exceptions to this, like if, um, you know, if the sun is behind a cloud or if, uh, you know, if the sun is in between, like in a in a gap between the clouds and so it's you know there are some darker clouds uh, and the sun can be shining brightly on the foreground while the clouds are darker uh, you know that's that's not necessarily an issue but you know you really need to sort of pay attention to when that's happening and when it's realistic for the uh, the clouds to remain so dark um, Clouds, it's not such an issue. It's really the bright part of the sky here that is the issue. So let me just go back to the previous example here. So, you know, while they're really sort of dark orange colors here, you know, this is being lit um, pretty, pretty unobstructedly for, uh, by the sun. And so really that should not be that dark in comparison. Uh, so, you know, like I said, this is a more uh, realistic blend. Now, if you do want to uh, retain those dark colors in the sky, if you want to really make the most of those, then what I recommend doing is getting to the point where your exposure is even between the foreground and the sky. 
and then darkening the image as a whole. So let me just add a quick curves adjustment here to show you what that might look like. You know, if you wanted to darken the image now, then you could do that. And the relationship or the sort of the balance between light and dark foreground and background remains reasonably uh, equal, you know, reasonably the same as um, before we darken it. Uh, in this case, you know, if I was going to add this darkening effect, maybe I would uh, just sort of remove it from the middle here just to give it a bit of, uh, you know, make it look a bit more dynamic and a bit of bright light coming through the middle. Um, but you know, that's just one example there. It's kind of like a massive vignette that I've just added now rather than darkening the whole image. But yeah, the general, the general advice here anyway, the main point of what I want to get across in this video is do not, when at all possible, do not overblend your skies by having too much of the dark exposure in the sky showing through when you're blending those exposures. Um, and to essentially try to have that even exposure to make it make sense, you know, is the sky darker than the foreground? If so, should it be? And more often than not, when you're shooting a sunrise with a bright sun in the sky, the answer is no, it shouldn't be. So uh, yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Not necessarily a tutorial as such, not a step-by-step, -step, but more just a bit of advice, something that I kind of recognized in my older photos, you know, once I had a bit more experience and, uh, you know, seen a lot more photos online and just figuring out what looks good and what doesn't. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you today. Hopefully you find it useful and you can, uh, you can take this into your photography and into your processing. So if you like this video, remember you can just give it a thumbs up to let me know. And also if you're not subscribed already, then just hit that subscribe button in the bottom right corner of the video window. And once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.